believe me when I tell you, this is our moment to build our future together, to unlock the powerful, life-affirming, transformative kind of politics that means we can help achieve safe and stable communities, create economic opportunity and prosperity, and safeguard our civil and human rights, and strengthen our human and public infrastructure. Excuse me. That was Aaron May Quaid, who's running for the state Senate in Minnesota, speaking at a Democratic Party endorsing convention. And in case you didn't notice, she was going into labor and had to leave that convention in order to go to the hospital. And I think this moment speaks to everything that is currently wrong with the Democratic Party, because her opponent ended up winning. Now, before we dive into some of the problems with the convention, I want to touch on something really important, and that is Aaron May Quaid's background. Aaron May Quaid was previously elected into the House, where she overturned a seat that was previously held by a Republican. She had previously Previously worked for Keith Ellison. She ran to be the Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota and has a long track record of very successful political work. Additionally, while in the Minnesota House, she accused two representatives of sexual harassment who both then later resigned. So to be clear, this is somebody who has been deeply involved in politics, has had a very successful career, has made many achievements and accomplishments, and by any metric is an incredibly electable candidate that has proven herself to be able to overturn Republican districts. He is also very well known across the state state and loved by many. So in every single way, she is incredibly qualified and also definitely electable. But she's put in this impossible situation where she's literally going into labor during this convention. And instead of postponing the convention, she's forced to withdraw in order to go to the hospital and her opponent wins. And then when her opponent wins, he does a victory lap on Twitter and does not even bother to mention that his opponent had gone into labor. This speaks to some of the worst aspects of Democratic Party politics. And it's something that I think that we all really need to understand and talk about. The truth of the matter is, is that the Minnesota Senate already has a problem with misogyny. There were previous members of the Minnesota Senate that were in leadership positions that were basically in what you could call a good old boys caucus. Now, some of them had been removed from their leadership positions and they actually put up a significant fuss about that fact. But that doesn't mean that the problem with misogyny in the state Senate is gone and it definitely doesn't mean that the problem with misogyny in the Democratic Party is gone. Because the reality is, is that Democratic Party insiders don't always represent the general population as a whole. And in fact, typically are richer and whiter than your average voter. This is significant because it speaks to the reality of the situation, because Aaron May Quaid is definitely to the left of her opponent. And this speaks to where the Democratic Party is at right now, because Democratic Party insiders, when faced with a candidate that is obviously more electable, obviously more qualified, and has proven herself to be able to run successful campaigns, they are choosing somebody that is basically a no-name candidate that has not proven himself to be able to win elections but is further to the right. And then of course we have to recognize the reality that as a black woman she is going to face a lot more scrutiny than a white man would. And another reason why this plays into it is because there are a lot of people that put the expectation on her that she should be tough and strong and that she should have to go through this convention even though she's going into labor. There are some people that are even like proud of her for being able to go through this, but the reality is she shouldn't have to. It is important that we recognize and celebrate people people's strengths, but at the same time, the most meaningful way to do that is to stop putting people in a position where strength is the only option. The Democratic Party knows that they depend on black voters, and especially black women voters, and they say constantly that they support black women. But here we're in a situation where, faced with the option of making life easier for a black woman who is running to be in the state senate, who would make a fantastic representative, instead of making her life easier and moving the endorsing convention they go about it with business as usual and they put all of the expectation on her to accommodate them even though, once again, she was going into labor. And this also speaks to an inaccessibility issue with the caucus system that Minnesota has and these Democratic endorsements, it excludes a lot of people. And the Democratic Party in Minnesota was facing a lot of backlash for not sticking with virtual conventions because in the first pandemic conventions, they actually had virtual conventions. They proved that they could do these things over Zoom, and it was an incredible success. A ton of folks who normally are disenfranchised from the caucus process were able to participate in a way they hadn't been able to before. People who are disability rights advocates had celebrated it and then demanded that that be the norm for the future because their in 
inclusion is absolutely critical if we want to cover disability issues. Instead of having a real conversation about disability issues, the Democratic Party pushed this line because Joe Biden wants to prove that, oh, coronavirus is gone, we're all back to normal, and in that effort, they actively exclude marginalized people from this process. And in doing so, they created this situation. If the Democratic Party wants to prove that it supports marginalized people, this is not it. This is Ben Corolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to stay up to date with my content, you can follow me at Benjamin Corolla on Twitter. And for those of you that might be wondering or have noticed, my pronouns are in fact she, her.